Hello and welcome to this presentation on Tomahawk Missile Flight Dynamics and Control. My name is Spencer Heilner. This is Mark Lindsay and Jessica Dowd. And we'd like to, we're very excited and grateful for the opportunity to present on how to control a Tomahawk Missile. Um, we have worked for weeks on this project and have examined various uh, control systems and their effectiveness. And many are concerned that flight control is a very difficult problem, and indeed it is, because we're flying at very high speeds, and even small changes in actuators affect a large change on the system. However, just by way of preview, we're excited to share that we've developed a stable control system for this problem, and we'd like to share that control system with you. So our focus has been on Tomahawk missiles. And our goal is to keep the missile traveling in a straight line towards the target, even with disturbances along the way. So we've been looking mostly in the horizontal axis, and so our controlled variable is horizontal position. We'd like to be able to keep that at the zero position on the axis, keep a straight trajectory. Um, and so to control that, we're using the manipulated variable of vertical fin angle. So we're changing that fin position at the back of the missile. And then we're accounting for disturbances such as wind, changes in air pressure, and maybe even birds that it hits along the way. And then, um, so the assumptions that we're making, um, we're assuming constant speed of the missile. So it's going at a constant 500 miles per hour forward. And then we're also assuming that there's no time delay between the fin angle and the angle of the missile. So basically the actuator works so quickly that as soon as we change the fin angle, we can assume that the missile is already going in that direction. So we've been working with a nonlinear system, and we've been trying to get it with one control loop. And so to be able to do that, um, we've simplified the model a little bit to put most of the focus on the controller rather than on the equations. And so we've got a few simple equations. We're using the force equals a constant times velocity squared. And then we're, we've also got an equation that solves for the velocity in the x direction. We use Simulink to create a model for our system. Now, it looks a little bit complicated, but it's really only one feedback control loop. The two key elements um, of the system here are the S function, um, which takes, uh, it, it actually uses the, for the equations of motion and force from the previous slide and uh, generates outputs from that, and the PID controller here. Now, in this PID control system, an interesting um, note that was key was the derivative term of 0.5. Get this off. Okay. The derivative term was essential in maintaining stability of the system because the system had a tendency to um, overreact sharply and create um, unstable oscillations. And the derivative term helped to keep that at bay. Also very important was the, the clamping here, which kept the angles at between negative 0.5 and 0.5. This is what you call a bang-bang controller, and it was absolutely essential um, to the stability of our project. Now we see here, uh, I show a, we're showing a step test of an angle change of only 0.1, and the exponential response from that shows the inherent uh, system difficulty that we have going on here. Um, with our PID controller in place, we were, however, able to maintain um, stability. It always is going to oscillate, but the oscillations are quite small. I'll get to that in a second. We see down here the the bang bang control system is actually working very well the angle changes very quickly from negative 0.5 to 0.5 um, but this helps us generate stable oscillations that end up being on the scale of less than half a meter every 10 seconds and when you consider that you're going over 500 miles an hour that's actually pretty good so in conclusion the model is relatively primitive but it does accurate, accurately represent the sensitivity of a high speed flying system and the fine-tuned PID controller was able to stabilize the system successfully, which we're very excited about. By way of recommendations, we'd like to study um, a little bit more of an advanced flight system now, updating the model with more accurate flight dynamics and adding in other dimensions, as well as investigating the effectiveness of a cascade control system to gradually change the set point of the direction and to affect the system. And there are some possible applications of a high s of a stable, highly oscillatory rocket. However, you know perhaps you want an erratic flight path. Perhaps you want to evade anti-aircraft fire. So, although this is a erratic controller, perhaps there are some applications for it. Thank you very much, and we'd be happy to take any questions.